Good afternoon. So my, my name is Aki Finneren. I'm working as a sustainability specialist in, in RISEO Group. Um, I will tell you more about the RISEO Group and then, then I will give you some idea what, what a RISEO Group is doing and, and what are our, our operations to, to lower uh, carbon footprint of a, not, not only our company but the whole food chain. So I start with uh, with the short company pre presentations. I have a good possibility to show show something about the Raisio Group. So Raisio Group is a Finland-based uh, food company. We have uh, uh, operations in twelve countries, countries, but the head office is in in Raisio near Turku. In Finland, uh, we produce food products and, and animal feed feed products in 15 locations in four countries. Feeds are mainly produced in in Finland, but um, uh, for example, in United Kingdom, we have several uh, production units and also one production unit in in United States. We have uh, at the moment uh, 1,500 persons working in a, our company, and one one third of the of the personnel is in in Finland. Raisio Group is a, a listed listed company, and we have a, a, mm, some 36,000 shareholders. So so we have have a quite quite. Uh, big amount of, of owners. So we operate in, in two divisions and one we have one connecting thing in our our operations which is grain. So we have a, a brand division which is in interna international operations are in, in United Kingdom and in Finland and in Baltic countries for example. Uh, we have several well-known brands in, in Finland, like Elovena. Penekol is a brand which is known worldwide. We sell Penekol products. Actually, our, our um, uh, retailers sell Penekol in 30 countries. In Nordic, Nordic countries uh, and in Baltic countries, there is a, this kind of a Nordic, Nordic brand which is which is uh, well known. The focus is on ecological and and health, healthy snack products. But I will show briefly more broad picture of, of our products. Then we have this uh, Raisio Acro, which is uh, it, it's very local. It's it operates in Finland, but we have also grain trade in in lo locally. And also, 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 in we operate in international international markets. We produce animal feeds, feeds, for example, and then we sell farming supplies for for our contract farmers. So we have a close partnership with with the farmers. We have we have several contract farmers, and and we buy grain, we sell feeds, so it's a quite, quite close interaction, interaction with, with, uh, with farmers, yes. Then about the vision, we have a vision to be a forerunner in healthy and ecological snacks with leading brands and we also want to act actively develop sustainable food chain and our strategy is made made to to get us to this vision so in in food products we have a focus called HEM so the products should be healthy ecological and mobile uh, people are nowadays uh, 
traveling between home home and work and and they have lots of hobbies so there's a need need for mobile food like uh, uh, snack bars and and so on so we we want to produce mobile food which is healthy and e ecological so this is this is our HEM star and we we are trying to focus on when 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 all three aspects are included we have a we have a very very good product so i i'm now presenting these uh, pro brands which are known in northern europe so the key market area is in finland sweden and in baltic countries and as you can see we produce food for many different consumers consumers and for example flowers for bakeries then we have these kind of uh, uh, snack drinks which are oat based or or soy based uh, drinks and also uh, vegetable based uh, or grain based uh, creams and, and milk milk products and and now this uh, demand for organic products is increasing so we we have also wide range of of organic and organic products and also these non non dairy products which so they are milk products without without milk or milk like products so to say so this was a brief introduction of Riceo group and then i will will go to to the today's subject which is uh, to increase awareness awareness of consumers about the foods environmental impacts and i will talk you some something about the carbon footprint and carbon footprint labeling um, we are, uh, or ICO is a forerunner in CO2, so carbon footprint labeling. Um, the life cycle assessments and and this kind of life cycle thinking began began in in Raisio Group, I think in 2001 when when uh, AgriFood Research Finland made a calculation for for let's see here. for this uh, elovena oat flake product and and then the idea uh, grew and and then uh, Raisio group decided to label this elovena oat flake product with the carbon footprint label in 2008 a year later, Raisio Group also added a water footprint label for this same Elovena oat flake product. And since 2009, Raisio Group have also calculated carbon footprints for, for its products in-house. So my work is to, to calculate carbon footprints for, for Raisio Group products and also um, look at the whole life cycle of products in 2010 the carbon footprint label was uh, updated so we nowadays have this kind of a carbon footprint scale which shows uh, is the carbon footprint of a product is it big or small and the update was uh, mainly due to consumer feedback consumers wanted to know if it if the carbon footprint of our product is it is it big or small and they it was uh, difficult to to get an idea because there was so few products to compare so we looked through different uh, lca studies and and decided to to make this kind of scale which have uh, five steps um, this scale 
footprint label is nowadays in more than 30 RISIO groups products and there is approximately 15 poultry products which have has also this this label and also one one honey honey product so there's a um, 45 to 50, 50 products which have have this label and our carbon footprint uh, labeling is based on life cycle assessment but we include um, only the uh, life cycle stages from from the cradle from um, farming input production and farming practices to uh, to this uh, retailer's warehouse and we decided to use this kind of a system boundary because these are the, these are the product stages we, where we can easily collect and get the data so that is uh, so we we include the farming part processing part but packaging materials and logistics of of the grain and also the product to to the retailers warehouse and as you can see in in this is a quite normal uh, proportion of a, of a rise your group products that the the biggest part of the carbon footprint is coming from from farming uh, part of of the life cycle including also uh, the production of of farming production productive inputs like like fertilizers then processing packaging materials and logistics they are they have a quite same share each each so it's a usually some 20 percent which these three other other part, parts of the life cycle are uh, taking or oh, what is the part of the carbon footprint of the product so we have we have decided to focus uh, focus on our efforts on on these farming operations of course we can't forget the the processing part neither the packaging materials and of course we have also operations to we look look at our our transportations how, how they can be done more efficiently but we don't use for example uh, transportation by plane so next I will tell you what are our operations to lower food chains carbon footprint as you to as I told you we concentrate on on farming operations and raise your group has several um, contact for uh, contract farmers and and we are well known in Finland about this uh, contract cultivation process so we have cultivation contracts with uh, with farmers to produce and, and cultivate different uh, grains uh, through cultivation contract we we are able to get high quality quality grains but it, it is also a pos uh, one way to and it allows us to collect some information from from the farmers how the grains are grown we, which are the productive inputs and what was the uh, grain yield for example for specific year then we provide services for the uh, for for the farmers we have advisory service we calculate different environmental indices uh, according to these uh, informations with which farmers deliver us and then we have <coughs> have services like extranet and 
grain analysis, weather services, and so on. And we also provide production inputs like uh, seeds and fertilizers for for contract farmers. And and we are constantly working that we have state-of-the-art products for for our contract farmers to to do the cultivation. So here is a presentation how which indices we we calculate according to the data which we can get from our contact contract farmers so here are the productive inputs okay we don't collect the money part we we can we use uh, market prices of different productive uh, in, inputs different products but we can get lots of information from from our contract farmers. Then we, according to these informations, we calculate three different indices. So we have a Eco Plus in index, which is an energy efficiency of, of the farm. Then we have also a Carbon Plus, which is carbon dioxide emissions, carbon footprint of, of a farming, farming practice. And also a water, water Plus, which is a nutrient balance and also eutrophication um, uh, impact category, if, if you think it as a life cycle assessment wise. So we, with these three different indices, we, we estimate and also we, we tell these farmers how well they have used these, these productive inputs. So we try to s try to tell them how eff efficiently they have utilized their productive inputs into the grain yield. We uh, several studies in Finland have shown that um, people know, of course, the the carbon footprint, but they don't actually know what what are the the sources of 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 uh, greenhouse gas emissions and what what are the what are the main main sources of of greenhouse gases so we have made this kind of a carbon plus tool for farmers in a, in our extranet so the the farmers can try if, if they change some some of the uh, field operations or change the amount of of uh, fertilizers which they use so how these different uh, different um, operations affect on on the total total carbon footprint of of the grain yield so this and this is also an uh, advisional service that farmers know better what what is the carbon footprint then we have cooperation with with different interest groups and i want to highlight one one project which is going on at the moment this uh, project with yara finland yara is a, a fertilizer company and we we have a cooperation with the Finland, Finland of office and and most of the fertilizers used in Finland are, are made by Yara, Yara in, in Finland. So we made last year we made a fertilizing recommendations with with Yara's fertilizers for for our contract farmers. Then we promoted the, this kind of a precision farming that. Um, that, for, that fertilizers are used more more efficiently and and they are just mm, thrown on, thrown on the fi field that but the fertilizers are used in a part parts of the field where where uh, these um, grains need needed most. Then we have also tested Yara's uh, P trap gypsum, which is uh, it has several. At, at least three different um, studies 
that show that this gypsum is it um, it reduces the runoff of phosphorus to to the uh, lakes and and rivers. So we we have this kind of a cooperation. This is only only the one one example. Then in food develop, development, we for example we we are concentrating on plant-based food products. So we have uh, this kind of plant-based creams and milks, milk-like products. We have cereal snack bars. We have also uh, cereal paste snack drinks and the grain use this is Finnish oat which we use in these products for it, it is the one one grain which is used then one product example which I want to highlight is uh, develop development of uh, domestic substitute for rice so we in our process we processes we mm, process uh, barley in a way that it, 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 it can be used like rice for example risotto and, and side dish and this kind of Torino pearl barley which is a good garnish and when you cook it it's like a, it's like a white milled rice and these products are they got a good uh, consumer uh, feedback from from uh, different food services for example then I uh, we have this uh, rice agro which uh, produces feeds so we also do feed product development the latest innovation is for dairy cows there is a patent pending for this uh, Maitri 12,000e product and there is a research made by AgriFood Research Finland which show that uh, the amount of energy corrected mil milk increased by 2.7 kilograms compared to standard feed and also the concentrations of milk protein and fat increased uh, at the same time so this uh, product intensifies uh, cow's metabolism so in late late latest decades and in cows are they have used um, same amount of uh, energy to produce produce same amount of milk uh, milk but uh, the the efficiency of of feed use it hasn't increased increased in in past decades so this um, use of this product it results it results in healthier animals higher milk yields and better milk composition of nutrients and when there is this kind of a, a farmer can get the money money out of milk uh, based on on this this nutrient level also in in the milk so it also increased the increase the income for for the farmers and and based on this um, higher milk yield and better composition of nutrients uh, it can be calculated that uh, methane emissions are are lower per kilogram of of milk so these are the examples which i wanted to highlight how how food company can can affect on carbon carbon footprint of of food chain thank you for your thank, thank you for listening and i'm happy to answer your questions thank you do we have any questions over there Hello, I'm Karin Kilk from uh, Stockholm Environment Institute, Tallinn Center. Um, I have a question regarding the product carbon footprint of your products. Um, you mentioned that um, you now have a new label uh, which shows whether the uh, product carbon footprint is small, big or average um, in a, like a form of scale. Yeah? 
So my question is, uh, when you con conducted the life cycle analysis for your products, did you only do it for your Rysia products? Uh, or you compared other products of, uh, on the market um, in a corresponding product group, for example, and, uh, and so you compared their life cycle assessment results, or you just compared the um, PCFs uh, or product carbon footprint of uh, Rysia products? First of all, when, when we decided to make this uh, label, we uh, look through the different uh, life cycle assessments to to produce a scale which where all of the food products can can be included. So we didn't only look at the grain products, for example. So if you are producing beef products, you can use the same same label for them. It, it shows that it's uh, in the in the highest part of, of the label. Um, at the moment, there is uh, quite few um, carbon footprints of grain products in, in Finland. They are main, mainly our products. So there is no any, any possibility to make compression in, in Finland in, for Finnish products. Um, of course, we have tried to and look at the different um, life cycle assessment from different other countries and compare to how how our products are um, compared to what is the carbon footprint compared to the products, for example, made in um, made in United Kingdom. But uh, the label was made mainly for give information for consumers about the carbon footprint. The, per, the label is not ma made for comparison. That, that is why, why, for example, there is no uh, exact value in the label. It shows in, in which, which column the uh, product goes. Thank you. More questions? Over here, here. Uh, you, you showed uh, in detail how we work with uh, precision farming uh, together with a fertilizer company. Do I get it right that you are not planning to enter the organic food market? Um, actually, <laughs> we we have organic products. Uh, for example, this Elovena oat flake. We have an organic uh, uh, substitute or organic product from from that that um, that brand uh, and we have also started to produce uh, organic feeds for for dairy cows so so we are in in organic product chain uh, yes, thanks uh, for the presentation. Um, you're mainly an uh, animal feed producing company, at least in a money-wise. Uh, and uh, one of the commodities you use is soy, which is known as one of the key kind of a risk commodities that is causing globally deforestation, uh, which is one of the one of the leading causes of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, I know you're a member in the roundtable of uh, sustainable soy, uh, but have you have you come up with a plan on how to minimize the risk that your sourcing is causing deforestation and and uh, kind of a set a timeline for switching to sustainable soy soy sourcing? Um, actually, we have in our company we have. Uh, I'm, I'm not maybe the correct person to, to a answer how we buy soy, soy and, and what, ki what kind of a traceability we have, have in, in soy. The, that is an important question and I, I know that in our company we have discussed about this and, and as you told we are 
we are operating in a round table of sustainable soy. So um, I'm not the correct person to answer to your question, so we can discuss it later, later further on. So thank you for the question. And one final question over there. Iris from Saaria in Eesti, and thank you for presentation. Um, Saaria and also started to use this uh, scale mark, so I know how hard work it is to calculate it. And uh, based on that, the question, um, is it this packaging and logistic part, part of your company, or is it something that you buy in, and uh, then how did you get the information? about um, cars, about petrol, about plastics, that kind of uh, influence. Um, I'm not sure did I get understand, understood your question about packaging. Do you mean a packaging mat material? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we use different um, databases for for packaging materials and also for transportation like cars and, and so on. But we collect the data uh, how much the different packaging materials are used in for our products to, to pack one kilogram of product, for example. And also, uh, also we can get information which kind of cars are used in our log logistics. So then, then I, I use um, information from, from international and uh, domestic databases to, to calculate the carbon footprint. And that is the, of course you can, there is a possibility to collect information from every, every truck if there is this kind of a locking, data locking system, but it's, uh, um, in certain levels, you have to use average values. Thank you. I just and so it's uh, you are calculating it. It's not that uh, your partner are sending you the information. Yeah, I'm I'm collecting the information cal From calculating. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But of you. course, uh, I can understand that uh, in, for example, in poultry products, uh, the chain is. Still, it's longer than with uh, with grain products, so it it can can get more complicated. For example, for example, with with poultry products. Okay, thank you very much.